There we go. Live, live, live. Yay. Hi, Stuart. Oh. I think V just got his signal already. Darn it, Ilea. Why are you messing with the signal already? It was going so well those five seconds. Well, I'm going to start with a poll then. What do you think of the motion picture? Love it. Uh, slash re directors. Directors edition. Hi guys, love it. Like it. Not liked. Like it. It's okay. Uh, don't like it that much. Okay. So there you go. In the chat, let us know what you think of TM. Oh, no, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let us know what you think of TMP. This is a film we haven't really talked about much. Um. Yeah. What a thing. Uh, we'll talk about this. A uh, little bit later, hopefully Stuart's internet will come back. But I definitely want to know what you guys think of TMP in general because it's such a a unique film in many ways. And what do you guys think about it? Do you like it? Love it? Meh? Or overall, don't like it? Then of course you have the better films of two, three, four. Is five better? I don't know. Hi, Simon. And uh, we're going to talk about. Motion picture, the 4K, and uh, have a chat. We'll see what we can discuss, we can, what we can learn. Maybe we'll share your own stories. You know, I'd love to hear if any of you. Hi, Holy Gabriel. And I'd love to know later on any stories of, of if you saw the original film in the original cinema experience. That is going to be something interesting to hear. Or if the first time, hey, maybe the first time seeing it is the director's edition. Maybe. Gosh, wouldn't that be a thing? I mean, I mean, first of all, has anybody in the chat never seen TMP? Anybody? And if you haven't, would the Director's Cut be your first version? Questions, questions. Yeah. Well, I just raised the audio. Stuart said the audio was fine, so I'll raise even more, but I did... Stuart said it was fine. Well, he comes back by now. It's not great, is it? Because literally, as soon as I put the webcam on, he's going to appear, and then it's going to kill. It's going to kill the Skype. But fine, we'll we'll give in, and we'll show the raw video, and then we'll have to quickly adjust it all in a minute. But yeah, has anybody not seen? TMP or has anyone only ever seen TMP in like standard def? Has anybody only seen it on VHS or on DVD? Has anybody seen has anybody not seen a HD? Uh, seen it with all those extra pixels, all the extra life put in? Yeah. Cause it's such a you know uh, I feel like for the for TOS you I feel like for the TOS you on reruns, or you missed it, or people swap VHS tapes, whatever. But TMP, you could go see it. Everybody could go see it all around the country for for a while. So I feel like more people should have seen TMP uh, as a potentially as a big sort of experience. And yes, there's more differences than uh, just the CGI. Quite a few of varying degrees of differences. And we'll talk about those in a little bit as I vamp. I don't want to go too far into it. But it's, uh. Uh, yes, Sebastian. Probably does. It's, it's a tricky movie. I don't think it'd be made. I don't think the same movie would be made today. But watching it today. It's a really interesting experience, actually. Very, very different. Very, very interesting experience. Has anybody actually seen the. Have you seen the Dreads of Cut? 
because that would also be helpful, but we can just... That can then do that, so it can then do that, so it can, so it can do... That was a whole thing. What happened, Joe? What happened? No idea. Just had no internet. I'd restart my computer. Ah. And your wife literally works for the internet company. It's not... doesn't affect... she doesn't... <laughs> the line's coming into the place. Don't start that. Cause I... I don't know. It's just, it's just funny ironic out of the two of us. <laughs> The internet employees. They get fucking fiber installed here. I was vamping, Stuart, but welcome back. Yay. I was saying I just did a, a, a poll for the TMP experience. You love it, like it, it's okay, or doesn't like it, don't like it that much. Where would you fit on that spectrum for TMP? Uh, I like it. Wouldn't say I love it, but I like it. Oh my god, YouTube says an ad should be here. Okay, fine, YouTube, you're our gods. We'll see you all in one minute. Bye, Stuart. Welcome back, Stuart. You made it for the post-ad break time. Congratulations. Yay. Now you can do your intro. Hi, everybody. I don't know what's my intro. I'll start sharing. Is that funny? Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hit like. <laughs> you know the routine. Um, super chat, please. We do Bye. need the assistance from you guys. 48 of you here, 24 people watching. I mean, 45 of you watching, 24 likes. My God. Hit that like button. Let's try to get those likes up to 50. Don't forget there are links down below in the description for our Teespring and our Tee Public store. We have some really cool Trek Yards merch. Check that stuff out. If you want to join the channel, we'd really appreciate that as well. There's a join button there. It's kind of like a monthly subscription to the channel. Or you can head on over to Patreon slash trek yards to support us that way on another monthly basis if you can't super chat for whatever reason um and you want to still support you can send a paypal to trek yards at hotmail.com just let us know that you sent the paypal on, in the regular chat and you will read your comment or question via the email from paypal that's another way to support us as well and help us out and get your voice heard so if you can please do we'd really appreciate that thank you Ooh, tab extra. Super chat's in. 20 krona. Name a movie that the director version was worse. Ooh, good point. There probably is one or two, but generally, no. Generally, the director's got their shit together and they know what they're doing. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, and everybody go vote in the poll. Hit like and go vote in the poll. All very important stuff. How many different versions are there? It's the original. There's, I think, a, a TV version, which has some extra footage. Then there's the director's cut. And then there's the new director's cut remastered. So probably at least four. Um, I could be wrong about that, but... Greetings. Yes. Throw in the poll, guys. Vote in the poll. I already told them that. And Tab Extra throws in 20 krona and says, name a movie that the director version was worse. Ooh. Can you think of any? Um, generally, yeah, they're, they're much better. Longer, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the hindsight of... Uh... But, well, that's it. I said they're longer usually, and maybe some pacing issues every once in a while with the director's cut. Mm. But um, other than that, they're pretty much all better. But they all come that. with hindsight as well. You know, you, you can't even if you might say, "Oh, I'm not being affected by audience critiques or whatever." You still might make this change or that change based on the reviews because you don't often get to re-release a film. Um, yeah. that's you know an amazing opportunity and certainly some films are significantly different or better or much different or much better and you know um, there'll be a lot more films that could have director's cuts I would kind of encourage all films like all films that have had a lot of changes mm -hmm. just to kind of see it's just an interesting exercise you know mm -hmm. certainly you know give Shatner 30 million and have him deep fake some new Shatner faces onto new actors to, to get yeah. rock monsters to you know 
totally impractical to do, but I mean, you know, I would like I would like to see his vision of that film, how he just recut it today based on new things. I mean, I'd be super fascinating. And certainly to to just create new space effects of your a bird of prey and a, a TMP. I mean, that's cheap as fuck. That would be so easy to do, and that's pretty much the majority of the CG in that film, except near the end. You know, it's easy yeah. shit. It's not particularly ambitious. It's just at the time it was expensive. They were high end models. That's why it's expensive. Yeah, I would love to see the, the director's cut of Star Trek Five. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So, you just went to see this in th- cinema last night. I did. So how was that experience? Oh Have my you god! Seen the motion picture on the big screen before? I've seen no Star Treks except Ooh. Insurrections. I've seen none of the first six at the cinema because, of course. Yeah. Um, I saw I saw Insurrection, but I barely remember it. Like I not I know I was there, but I don't remember it, the experience. Nemesis, the first I remember, <laughs> which is sad because that's the last one. And, and then I was looking at Dad like. Oh, I guess we'll go now. <laughs> I suppose all the new films, so that's not great to have only seen that one in the cinema and the last one. So this really was seeing Kirk, McCoy, Bones, and the Enterprise for the first time that big ever in my life. That is an experience. And Spock. And Spock. No, I saw JJ Spock. I saw JJ oh, Spock. Okay. I think I yeah. I was thinking that, but I didn't say it because I didn't say it without. I will say it is genuinely a different experience in the cinema. Genuinely. Uh, have, did you see it in the cinema? What's your cinematic experience with? TV? I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one in the cinema at all. I've seen Star Trek two like twice in the cinema because they bring it back around occasionally. Yeah. Um, but not this one, no. So. Are you going to? Is there enough? Are there any showings left in your neck of the woods? Yeah, I, I, I would assume so. I haven't heard of any, so hopefully it'll get here eventually. Well, it's now. I mean, this is this is the little window, so I would I would I'll, go check. I'll have to look into it. Yeah, but I didn't know it was happening. And then some someone told me, "Oh, it's happening in Bedford on Monday." I'm like, "It it's Saturday." Yep. Oh, I guess we go Monday then for the one time. Okay. And so we went. So that was uh. Oh yeah, so also his chatter says the special editions or director's cut of the original trilogy is kind of considered worse. Ah. How do you counter on that? Well, those are special editions. Well, they're still by the director. Cuts. They're 100% director's cuts, though. And they're not worse. Like, he had good intentions for most of it, and there's only, like, one or two scenes that really irk me, one of which is the singing scene in Jabba's Palace. Most of the additions he made I didn't mind. I actually kind of like some of the improvements. Um, I wouldn't say they're worse. They're different. I can see why a lot of people think they're worse, though. They certainly make them not films of their time. Because when you yeah. splatter in CG that's aged poorly, like there's CG that's aged worse than the live-action stuff and the miniatures. So there's moments where well, that looks bad, but it shouldn't look bad. Oh, it was done in 1998. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is weird. So you kind of smudge this little bit of Vaseline in certain scenes. Not literally, just, oh, that's wrong. But there's certain cool... You know, I, I, I like a random banter shot in the desert to add depth you know context is fun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eric Skelton $10 something I've never understood TMP modernized the look of the Klingons and everyone was fine with it but then New Trek changed the Klingons again fans complained why the difference in response because you only had like three years of TOS with only a few episodes with the Klingons then they got a big screen budget so they thought they'd upgrade them and then they were consistent for almost 50 years in all other forms of Trek. And then they decided to change them. That's why. And to say that it's prime timeline for Discovery when the Klingons look like that. Clearly not. So those are a couple of reasons. Also, fans weren't okay at the time. There was huge people saying, what the hell, they're not Klingons. Yes. Like, loads of people. Yeah. Like, most people weren't overly thrilled because it was wrong. Yeah. But because there wasn't the internet word only spread so far, it, rage could only get so big because people couldn't share their feelings and then by the time 2, two and 3 and 4 came out, you accepted it because okay, you understand the rationale for it and you move on because it, like you say, what, 20 10, 5 Klingon episodes in all of TOS? It's under a dozen. Yeah. yeah. So, oh no, they changed a dozen appearances but when you've got 350 appearances of Klingons that look one way it's like, yeah, that's the way. That's why fans and also... 40 years more of fans, so it's clearly entirely different situations. You can be annoyed mm-hmm. at TMP, but then 40 years of consistency, and then discovery. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Eric Skelton puts in another five dollars and says Discovery was and is terrible, but not because of the Klingons. Well, no, but they're like the icing on the cake. As far as I mean, being... they are pretty central to season one. So if that's the first couple episodes specifically, I yeah. mean, I, I'd say they're certainly one of the worst parts of Discovery because you just can't watch and think Klingon, which is pretty bad for a show about Klingons. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mm-hmm. help the overall vibe. Yeah. Um, tab extra fifty krona. So thank, thank you. you. Worf is the reason fans hate the new Klingon look. Explain. Yeah, that's not even accurate. <laughs> Anyhow, so you were excited to see it on the big screen, and how did the uh, visual effects and everything look for you? Um, well, it was a super, super, super interesting experience because it was, it was going back in time. I mean, having to watch you know a three-minute overture at the start, and then <laughs> yeah. titles after waiting through ten to twenty minutes of trailer of uh, bullshit trailers. After getting there ten minutes early, so waiting forty five minutes to watch a film that I've seen ten times. You were quite tired by the start of the film before the film gets started, you know? I really mm. wish someone would tell you the actual start time so you could choose to be on time rather than go to the not start time and get the trailers. Like why can't they ask the exact time it starts so you can choose to be on time? Anyway, pet peeve, whatever. It was different. Like I said, it it made me appreciate that TMP is not a film as much as it's an experience. Because when you have it on anything smaller than a cinema, which is how I've I've only ever watched it, it is the the, the space effects and the dialogue and the acting all kind of blend together as one dimension. When you see it, and and, and therefore when it's it's low-key one, it, it lowers the entire tone. In the cinema, however... The, the close-ups of the actors, you really see the performance. Like, the subtext and shadow performance, I've never seen it so well done. Because I saw all the little tiny things he was doing, and they were really... Like, his performance in that film is excellent. He's funnier than I've ever seen him be before, like, from previous viewings. I got way more of his subtext. Really, really good. Uh, and when there's a lull in the, in the, in the people stuff and the space, because it's such a giant scope, it washes over you in a way that a TV can't. So it's genuinely a better experience than the cinema, which I'm kind of sad about because that's what 99% of people will ever never experience it in, ever. For all of mm. time. But, but, that was such an interesting experience. Like, seeing the Enterprise that big, sort of religious experience. <laughs> mm. You know, like a 50-foot Enterprise. Like, oh, that's how she should be. You know, so that was, uh, you know, best the Enterprise ever looked for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it was so, yeah, it's a pretty distinct thought, Stuart. It's a pretty distinct thought. It wasn't just the same film again that I've seen lots of times, even though it could have been. Yeah, well, it was a remastered one, so updated visual effects for the Enterprise, at least. I mean, cleaned up. Shots. Let's not say updated, yeah. cleaned up, yeah. There was definitely better. Although, the matte lines that were still bad were still bad. They still they didn't fix everything. You could very, and in a big screen, you could see when the black of the outline is like two pixels out, and it's following yeah. it, and it's like, well, that's <laughs> there's a black line. But some of the shots were perfect. Very cool. Yeah, I gotta see it. And I'll have to check this. Yes, the theaters around. Here genuinely a different it. experience. And I will say, even though obviously it's illegal, but okay, I did get a picture of the of the epic shot of the Enterprise. Because to get a picture of the cinema of the Enterprise, that's pretty special. So I have mm. a picture of the Enterprise on the big screen. Um, nice. Which then I zoom in, and it looks like crud. But you know, I know I knew I saw that in. You know, I got the Enterprise on the big screen. I got a. I showed a selfie. Enterprise selfie. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. Uh, Kev Horsley, $2. Thank you. Uh, opening sequence with the Klingons is my favorite Trek moment. Yeah, that Klingon music for the first time, seeing the Katingas, uh, just the three of information, then that Passover where the camera does its little... Yeah, that was an epic moment for sure. Um, Another thing that stands out is that the music of TMP really helps the film. Yeah. It's so well scored that when the visuals are relative, I mean, the, the I mean, the ship's interior is boring as hell, in the color palette. There's not much to look at visually. Luckily, the actors are really giving it at their all. But the music really brings up the notes. The music is so good when you listen to the big screen, when it's all absorbing. That really helps. 
And so that intro scene, it's such a long scene on purpose. It's meant to make you like sort of embrace it. Uh, although I was kind of surprised how not well some of those shots held up. Like the very first shot you see is the Vija cloud. I'm like, oh, that's blurry as fuck. If that's the, if that's going to be the reflex quality, shit. Luckily, it gets better, and obviously they vary. Some elements were, I guess, kept better. And that first shot of the battle cruisers, it's so variable because the further away they are, the worse they look. Because obviously the map lines are getting smaller and smaller pixels. When they get closer, they look great. But far away, they don't look great. And so it's like it, the sins aren't being hid. But when they go to the close-ups, those were astoundingly good. Yes, they're miniatures, but you could almost be con con convinced they weren't. Because suddenly built that high res, that high big, that well composited, those close-ups were astoundingly good. Mm. Yeah. Tab Extra answered our question, I guess, with oh. 20, 20 Corona. And said, imagine Worf with the new Klingon makeup and TNG. Be terrible. Would be. But unfortunately for us, he looked like a Klingon. And Worf! Finish Mork! Good. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even do it. Tab Extra. 20 Krona again. Uh, TMP set the standard for hero ship shot. Yeah, that iconic scene of the Enterprise. Uh, first, like, here's the new Enterprise, guys. I got a picture of. That, that, that long intro and the, the build up and the just showing different. Just the docking sequence is fantastic. Well, and, 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 and again, it is, it's very long, obviously, we all know it's long, that's the biggest problem, but the music is so good, and again, in big screen, you genuinely are seeing Shatner emoting the shit out of, I've missed that my baby girl that I haven't seen in three years, like, that comes across so much stronger, and he, even his reactions with Scotty, the way he kind of, in, the little stuff, really, well. and I know you've got big screens, so you see it bigger anyway, I get that, I've only had small screens in my house, fine. Americans probably in general have bigger TVs. Fine. But for me, that was a really like, oh, I'm seeing everything they're giving. Mm. Shatner, I mean, he is obviously the lead. Like, distinctly the lead. It's his journey. But he's got some really good lines. He does a really good performance in that. Um, and there's not, a, like, a ton of character stuff. But he does infuse lots of little things throughout. Well, I'm, I'm more impressed by his performance than I've ever been. Now, the most important question for me, for you seen on the big screen was how exactly how how good did decker's package look because you know <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive on a smaller screen bold bright bulbous bulgy no it's um i mean the uniforms aren't great and i and although uh i think yeah, his bulge fine but i think also like mccoy's chest there stands out more in 4k 50 foot why do they think having open chest uniforms is a good idea I mean, let's be honest, art, design, art director, they should Because it was made in the 70s. But it wasn't, it was made in 2269. They, they knew from TOS not to age it, and they aged it. I know. But I should say, they should have fired him, and they did. So, yes, they let go, him go, and they brought someone in better. Uh, but, they, I mean, such uninspired uniforms, they're really, like, some of them just like, look like off-the-rack sweat jumpsuits. It's really poor. But then, um, like, the, suddenly, all of a sudden, Kirk has rank braids, like two extra braids on his arms, like that doesn't fit at all. It's like just sewed them on with a cheap sewing machine four minutes before they're poorly put on. It's like, look, I am TOS. It's like, yeah, but you're wearing a crappy little spacesuit, you know. But then you know, then but then you have like the the the, the Vulcan outfits at the start, really nice, really nice texture detail of those of those things. Ilya's costume, the the orange really works to bounce, like give some color to the scene. That really looks good. Again, the you know, uh, McCoy's obscene. Um, you know, beard and chest and where the hell he was going for look. I mean, that just stands out so much stronger in 4K, 40 foot. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of Kirk's outfits were actually nice. Kirk had the nicest of the outfits in that yes. movie. Um, well, he's out of the yeah, Admiral of so quickly. Great. So quickly. Yeah. It's such a shame. Yeah. I hate the color palette on that movie. There is no color palette. Um, how those past like like light pastels there, there is no color palette you know but the thing is part of it though is that when they get into the vija cloud when the blue comes to the view screen that gives it a needed pop that genuinely does help the scene and it turns what should be an extremely cheap poor looking set in terms of color and detail 
it gives it that the edge, some sort of lighting that just kind of makes it oomph. Because there's two shots in particular I thought, on set, that must look like just cheap TV. But, but the good cameras, remastered, good lighting, it, it just, boy, that saves that. And that's what, you know, you can go to any motion picture set, film on a photo like crap, film on a 10K Sydney mm. camera, it'll look good. Film on a 100K Sydney camera, it'll look a lot better, you know? Matthew uh, DeFridis, $5. In my opinion, TDE. I mean, the director's TNT cut? On the big screen is incredible. No. But yeah, director's Jerry, edition. Yeah. Oh, the director's edition. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith's score is the greatest of all time score. Pacing is so much better. Officer Smash is the only bad scene. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Heard they spiced up that Officer's Mess scene a bit. But. Now, How was the Vulcan scenes? Were now, the Vulcan wait, scenes on. better? Do, do you mean the the, the, the the everybody scene in the, the in the big room, or do you mean? I think so. I think that's what he's referring to. Okay. Uh, or your question, Vulcan? Yeah, I was I was shocked because I've you know that's that's a true light way of you know re rendered stuff, and I a lot of it's clearly the same scene files they've just managed to save and redo. They they really improved Spock's motion, get like because the Spock that moves originally they got away with a lot. It was in standard def, which was lower than they were doing on Enterprise. They really did a good motion capture. It like I mean he's not that hard to model nowadays. Character models aren't, you know, give a good guy a few weeks and he could do a pitch perfect, right? But they did a, a really good Spock walk up. The 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 mat, the pan down was very very good. Um, the smoke was good. Stuff San Francisco looked great. A few of the shots were real real good. I wish there was obviously more of that because the remasteringness is sort of at the start more than at the end. <laughs> uh, and you can definitely. I don't know if it was intentional, but the I noted that I think at least that all of the CG versions of the Enterprise had the inner chill chill lights glowing blue, but that's not how they glow the rest of the film because they only go at light, they go at warp. I'm thinking is that a continuity error now? Because they're totally lit in some scenes that they aren't normally. Speaking of Stuart, they did a Were thing. Were they blue or purple? Well, bluey purple. I mean, Are they blue or ultraviolet. I mean, more yeah. more blue than purple, but that 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 hue. But I think Stuart they actually did fix a a Canon mistake because I was really? looking for it, and given I couldn't see it in fifty foot, and it's not that hard to do in theory. I think they fixed right at the end of the film the last big mistake, the Spock and McCoy's armband changing color. Because well, I was, fixed it because I was looking and they didn't change color. Because it's not, it wouldn't be that hard just a rotoscope, read color grade, they don't move. It's, I mean, it's just changed from one shot to the next, but most of them one color, just revert it to the other color. I think they fixed that. I mean, why wouldn't you fix just a blatant mistake that's that, that's that? Why wouldn't you, Stuart? I think they fixed it. Yeah, I do. That's cool. That's cool. I'll have to look for that when I finally see this version of it. Yeah. Um, Cab Extra throws in another 20 Cronus, I think it's Thank much. Movie, movie failed to show the size and shape of V'ger. Oh yeah, you got new V'ger scenes probably in this one too. Like you can see the actual well, the externals as, of the ship. It's the same as the original director's cut, just more HD. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. But you missed crazy. Crazy. Crazy ghost hunters. <laughs> oh, crazy ghost hunters! Super chat, two dollars. Does Star Trek Enterprise deserve a fifth season? Yes. <laughs> no, give give them a mini series or a movie. They're too old to do a series oh, well, now. That too. It's like twenty years yeah, later. They need almost. to come back in some capacity. S but, yeah. Scott Scott looks a lot older than Shatner did after twenty years after his show. Uh, I think I, I guess Scott was older than Shatner, but he does not look young anymore. So yeah, do a do a movie. But he looks at least twenty years older than he did at the time. So that would kind of scupper the Roman War idea. He couldn't. He couldn't be. He could be present Archer, but they're not the Enterprise movie, are you? So yeah, might be late, too late for that. Space Chatter says they corrected the armbands. Yeah, David C. Fine told me himself that they corrected the armbands. Awesome. Boom. Good job. Good job noticing that too. I mean, because it's such an easy thing, and I, I said that about you know Picard end of season. Just fix the mistake that you'll be judged for the rest of history. You might. This is a deliberately altered, improved, changed version. You might as well fix a few mistakes. You know. Might as well. Because when they're like accidental whatevers, but it's just a mistake, there's no reason to keep it in. 
Yeah. Well, we got 89 viewers watching with 60 likes. Guys, hit that like button if you haven't. Keep the super chats coming. We want to hear your thoughts on the motion picture in general um, and the different directors' cuts and remastered versions. We want to hear anything you noticed, anything you want us to talk about. Um, there's, there's, I've seen this film a lot. Um, I Why? The director's edition that I have on DVD. Why have you seen it a lot? I haven't seen, I haven't seen, I haven't seen uh, the remastered 4K one yet. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be an experience for me. Because I don't think um, I've but ever. I do prefer the director's edition. I don't think I've ever just had the urge to watch this movie. You know, because it's, it's not a particularly engaging film. So I don't know why you'd watch it. I mean, I don't watch start it randomly for the sake of it. I sort of watch it in for, for a reason for bursts. So do you just get the vibe, or do you just put it on for a special occasion, or do you watch it as like a yearly tradition, or was it just or just randomly just over the course? Just get a vibe to watch it, or if I want to watch the Star Trek movies, I will. Just beginning uh, and watch them all ah uh, that i get okay that makes sense i'm not one i'm not one to skip stuff just to, to oh, watch yeah. what i want to watch especially if i'm doing a rewatch no that's good uh, so that's like, why I've, that's that's logical yeah um but, but i do like the director's edition because at the end at the end where they come out of the enterprise and you see the enterprise from the side the original matte painting they used for the side of the saucer was so wonky so it has such a weird angle to it and they fixed that um so I do prefer the director's cut just for shit like that. But it's fun to, you know, see those things and go, God, what, what were they thinking? That was on the that was on the big screen, you know, that like that map painting. You know, I, I know you know the one I'm talking about. It's uh, awful. Nothing's scaled, you know, and the the curve of the saucer is completely wrong. Oh, that one. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All, all yeah, that yeah. stuff then looked nice. It was less ambitious than it could have been. They kept very true to the director's cut original. Which is interesting because obviously that version is Robert Wise was heavily involved in. He has since passed away, so this is a remaster without the director's involvement. But he did the other cut, so they obviously had to keep it with his version, but any changes are now out of the original guy's remit. So they had to, couldn't change it much more. I personally would love to have seen a few more video shots, especially at the end it kind of feels like there should yeah. be one or two more. And obviously they've got the model, they've got the set scene, so it wouldn't be very hard to add a few more. There's definitely like two moments particularly I was like, ooh, ah, oh, no ship shot, because obviously they're not going to add one. Um, but one of the things that, I always said the music stood out to me, but part of the music is that the sound mix was it is really, really good. And you don't tend to notice a good sound mix because it just is the film, but a fictional science fiction um, setting, everything's obviously added. You're not listening for, you know, you go into a desert, you're hearing the crickets or whatever. That's just part of the ambience. You're you're ignoring it. But I thought the sandwich was really, really good in this. So much that it stood out, but in a very, this is a busy ship way. And I do believe they actually added more. Because I, I know for a fact they found and were able to um, audio leave remaster certain lines from certain actors on certain scenes to kind of use better takes or things that, that were originally lost. So... I felt like I heard some bonus Uhura and Chekhov VO in the background as like, you know, security says we powers at 45%, like just randomly in moments. I was like, I've mm. never remember hearing that before. Maybe because they were lower in the mix, but I think they might have found some new recordings. Because I genuinely thought, I felt for the first time that Chekhov, Uhura and Scotty were more in the film than any other time. And they're barely in it, but because I felt like they added a few more little bits like tiny little things to remind you they're there. I was like, okay, they are in this film. Like they were able to finally put back the Chekhov got injured and then Chapel comes in and Aaliyah has another line they've never even heard ever before. I don't know if that was re 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 proved. So I just watched the director's cut on DVD mm. like two Christmases ago and I didn't remember that scene from that. And I was shocked how little was actually different. This I felt as more was mm. different because they were able to refine all the stuff yet again. I thought it was definitely more different than I thought previously. Yeah. Well, Subspace Chatter says, I prefer the director's edition on DVD. They should have just released that to disc and instead given Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, the lavish treatment that TMP has been given. I kind of disagree. Um, Star Trek The Motion Picture is one of those like, important movies in the history of cinema, um, and especially important for Star Trek, is for restoring the franchise kind of thing. Um, so it's more of a historical thing than Star Trek V. I mean, Star Trek V, just for Star Trek fans, deserves some kind of re-go over for sure. Like we said, a director's edition of that would be fantastic, but I don't think they could do that. Um, so, yeah, 
But, but yeah. also you say they should just put it on disc and send it out. They did. It was called the DVD release in 2001. Yeah. Like, they're not going to put that on Blu-ray. It's not a Blu-ray quality. So they're either remastered to Blu-ray, which means re-rendering everything from scratch. So you might as well 4K it, because we had the 4K. Because we did the 4K version, it's already been released. So they already had all the 4K stuff ready to go. They had to redo the bits that were different. So I, your point is, why wouldn't you do that? And it's amazing they did, but it's definitely the best version to watch it. And I was... Yeah, I was impressed at some of the clarity stuff um, and things, the things that, you know, because SD to 4K is like eight times bigger resolution, which is a lot for a renderer. So things like every time they use digi doubles, the scene when they walk out the hole, as you mentioned at the end, like originally they could be like, you know, 30 pixels wide and there's just, it's just people doing this and, and now they're much, much clearer. They're obviously now almost like a full... Like the entire size of the screen, the rendering originally is now the size of Kirk's head on the new version, and they looked a lot nicer. They cleared a new mocap, and it's clearly much, much better. So they definitely, the things that could have really let them down, they just redid from whole cloth, because, I mean, of course they should, but you can't get away yeah. with stuff in 4K, uh, even if you aren't meant to notice it, because it's, you know, it's that far away. It's like, yeah, but make it better. They did. Casual Trekker, five dollars. Hey, uh, haven't seen the whole thing yet, but what I've seen was really good. Did they change matte paintings in Starfleet that definitely looked drawn to extend the set? Great. What? Do what? Sorry, cut out again. Uh, he says he haven't seen the whole thing yet, but what he's seen was really good. Did they change the matte paintings in Starfleet to that definitely look drawn to extend the set? I think he's talking about that docking scene at, on in San Francisco, which you said looked great. So, as in the uh, when the shuttle comes in, yeah, yeah, that looked the worst out of all of them, visibly. Really? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because was there still the TOS shuttle there? Oh yeah, it was. I they had it. Yeah. Yeah, it was the same, and it was even like I could tell you. The, I think what they did there, they used the original scene file from the original version, thinking they'd get away with less improvement. Or maybe they thought, we want to keep the original map painting intact, but it's so blurry and low detail outside of the, the window or the space, that I'm like, that looks distinctly worse, because it's just sort of a lower fidelity. Now, I get it's out of focus, because why would the deep background be deep in focus when you're looking at this? I get that, but it looked the, easily the lo lowest quality. Like, the, the side stuff looked fine but it it blended in but that's not necessarily a compliment that sets bare bones in terms of detail i mean it's not you notice the people more like wow why are there vulcan security guards walking around i don't know and why is there people in the loincloths they don't know either uh, which is just still dumb still dumb but uh now yeah the scenes some of the scenes that bother me on that were some shots on the bridge where they're talk talking to somebody and you see their face and then everything behind them is just blur did they fix <laughs> that or was it still a very blurry because it shouldn't be that blurry it was a weird decision now, to do that do you mean the the dual blur where the someone's in focus someone's in focus but everything else around them is out of focus or yeah you... yes yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah that was like a big craze at the time like we can do dual focus let's do lots of it it's in like two scenes and it's pretty obnoxious it, it's worse on the big screen because it's like why is 60 percent of my screen perfectly in focus and everything else is just absolutely like crummily out of focus it's, 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 it's a camera lens trick it's like hurting the image one of yeah. it one shot really worked three looked like christ crap bullshit but that's they were just bad aesthetic choices that's all it was um okay. but they i mean they they stopped that i mean there were clearly ideas they had and they just sort of stopped <laughs> as, as the film goes on uh i wonder if they'd even be able to fix that blur if they wanted to because mm. the way it was originally filmed no well oh um well, okay. If you had, yeah, if you admitted that you were just going to re remove Decker out of focus behind, then yes, you could probably do a a replica depth mat thing. I mean, they're not that long a shot. Anything that's short can be done easier. But no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oliver Lavery Frog, member for three months at the rank of captain. Thank you. So much. Uh, I don't know this film. I didn't know this film was in the cinema, and it leaves my local screen tomorrow. I'd screamed a long con, but it was the wrong movie. I mean, can you go tomorrow? 
Or do you mean it leaves as in it's not in tomorrow? I missed mm. an early fuse, not one screen today. Go, 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 stop watching us! Yeah, I just found out that the net showing is at like 6 o'clock, so I gotta go now. Bye. Is there, is there one later? As in another day? I have no idea if it's even shown. I haven't looked. Oh. So. He lies the entire time. Mm. But it was a very interesting experience. And it, it felt like they threw, as a, as a movie, felt like they threw a lot of random things in because they felt like it. There's a lot of just choices that are like, well, that's a weird choice. Mm. Any examples? Uh, one stood out because again, I'm seeing it on the week. There's lots of weird edits where you would think sh that, you know, that should be, should be punchy and, and efficient. And so the first one that when I said that came to mind is there's a scene in engineering, which looked nicer, I'll, I'll, I'll say, in this version. There's Scotty and there's a black engineer on the station, uh, as in working the panel, and they're trying to fix the impulse. Um, it might be extended a moment when they're, you know, Kirk's like, yeah, it's a warp, and Bo's like, you're pushing, and then we let Scotty try and fix it for, I guess, an hour? I don't know, it's, that's what it kind of implies. And it just, it starts on a mid-shot, it starts to dolly in on this black guy in front, who's working a console for a good ten seconds without any dialogue or any change of movement. Then he walks out of frame, Scotty moves into the place and says, All right, Captain, we're ready! And I was like, why did that have to take 35 seconds of time? Do they just want to put a black actor in front, foremost? That's all it felt like to me. Like, it's such a weird framing when normally just cut to him walking away and then cut to Scotty. It... it Add in the runtime. Well, that's the thing. It was a weird... If it was obviously a choice. Um... <laughs> I don't know what the choice... Why the choice was there. Yeah. Um, so 78 likes guys we're still not at the 80 that I usually ask for but hit that like button we have mm. 92 people watching so we should actually be able to get to 100 likes mm -hmm. uh, keep the super chats coming again we want to hear your thoughts anything you noticed or you know know about the, the new 4k director's cut you want us to talk about any mm -hmm. changes anything you prefer that they wish wish they didn't do <laughs> let us know um, and I wouldn't mind a new member during this live yes course. Oliver just say you're ill then leave. <laughs> we'll just walk out. Just just say, where's Oliver gone? I don't know. <laughs> don't even tell him. Just leave. We'll see you tomorrow. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. The, yeah. I, Warren, I would agree. for some Because those chairs look a bit... All the bridge chairs. Kirk's looked okay, but that's because it's the most expensive one. You really saw there was just cheap-looking metal on the, on the headrest, and you can see the, the formed wood with a thing on it and the screws didn't look good they didn't look futuristic at all um and i never noticed it before but in fact the headrests go up it went, yeah yeah they automatically go the hell? Why, why is that why do they waste why do they waste money on that jesus christ the future shares the two things but it's so unbelievably unnoticeable i had to watch it in the cinema to notice it doesn't tell you I've how subtle it, but, that tells you yeah. how unbelievably subtle it is yeah and it's never really used ever again. So, whatever. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> now, I also at the end where V'ger's launching pros to orbit Earth, mm -hmm. I think that scene was totally redone. Mm -hmm. Was it noticeable? Because I've seen like a kind of side by side comparison that was like completely different almost. Um, but not having the side-by-side -side comparison is something that stood out to you as being newer effects? Or did it kind of fit in? Well, I mean, I I obviously know the original, and I know the directors are cut, because I've, I've always been interested in that. You know, there aren't that many changes, so obviously you notice the ones that are. I mean, it was obviously the same scene file. It was the same. They did a very good job not changing what was approved by the other director, because that's a good thing to not change. But yeah, I mean, it was... It, it was there was a trailer that was released with that, you know, classic shot of Vija coming in. It's now the ship actually coming in. And it was very thoroughly blown out. Like, the, the highlights, there were too many lens flares in one of the trailers, and it looked awkward. They weren't in the, this version, which was much nicer. It was much more clean. But it's just, it was just the director's original cut. Just It's now in crystal clear detail, you know, with the lightning in the, in the, in the hull being more prevalent. prevalent. But definitely wanting mm -hmm. more. Like, the ship's a great ship, and I... Like, I've known what the ships looked like for a good 15 years, so I, every time I've watched it, I'm like, well, I know the journey. 
But I remember as a kid, there's no context to the ship. It's just, I always thought it was kind of like a city in space. Just as I go over, I'm like, well, is that just part of the cloud? I don't, I don't, you, know, you never get a sense. Mm -hmm. They never don't show mm -hmm. anything about the ship, so you have zero idea. But you know the ship, you actually know the dimensionality. You'd like, oh, they're actually crossing this bit through this bit. It's not actually mountains, they are the wings. But the, the original film did a terrible, appalling job at representing it. That's why I was shocked when, you know, there's actually concept art of the ship. So they didn't know what it looked like. They just didn't ever show it. We just saw segments of it. Yeah. Although I did notice in this version that when they come up, because it's quite distinct, there's there's one side of the ship that has the bobbly orange glow and another side that has the the, the sort of sphincter clenched for, but yeah, fine. And Kirk, they start, when they come to the cloud originally, it's via the bobbly lit side where they go to the sphincter, get pulled in, great. But then when it comes out, and as when they when they when it gets to Earth, it's now turned around for some reason. Don't know if that was a VFX like they just, they committed to one side, but I guess the huge ship did a full turn because then it goes by, then that's at the back, and it's like, but that's not how Kirk. They travel the entire mm. length of the ship to get into it. Why would it turn? I don't know. That was weird. Like which is the front, which is the back? Well, it's both in the film. Don't know if that was a mistake oh. or a deliberate mistake or a yeah. Well, Troy Dacus throws in two dollars hey. and then says. Forgot to add text, lol. Well, then just comment what you wanted to say with it. Yes. <laughs> and we'll read it. But, uh, oh, there it is. Troy Drake is $5 now. Loved the little detail of the Enterprise pulling out in front of V'ger and descending and turning around. See, it's the little thing. That I thought was new because that would be such an easy visual that effects recreation. Like, I know there was, there was always a shot like that, but to realize it better because um, it's so far away, I mean, it's not hard to recreate. I've, I've got all the files here. Let me have a little look at... Because I haven't gone back and checked what was actually new or not. That's what the original so had. I haven't seen that. The first I've heard about it, but that's not like an interesting shot for sure. Yeah, it helps show the scale better, obviously. Uh, Megan Bruns, who's been a member for four months at the Rank of Commander. Thank wow, you so thank much, you. Megan. Uh, I want to watch this in the cinema, but I'm unable. Oh, no. Wow. Well, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent in that people, cinema should just show old films. Yes. I would pay to see lots of classic films that I would never get a chance to see on the cinema. Mm -hmm. Like, why mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, even if it's just the commercially available 4K disc, you know, if I could see Casablanca for the first time, I'll see it. I'd rather see it in cinema. You know what I mean? If I have a choice. Mm -hmm. Oh! Well, that was a bad cut. I just watched that scene and there's a shot where Vija fires at them and there's, there's literally a jump cut between two effect shots and everyone jumps. The hell? Well, that's crap. Wow! Oh my god. I was like, four oh, that was terrible. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. 90 likes. Yeah. Still not at 100, guys. 10 more likes. Hit that like button. Ooh, those mat lines, man. Uh, James Butler says external shot, internal wide shot, sweeping external shot, close up reaction shot, wide angle extreme sh or external shot, dialogue external shot, repeat. That's yeah, that's a good synopsis. <laughs> With a few lines of dialogue in between. Yeah, it, it it isn't really a movie; it's an experience. I mean, the fact that you can summarize the film in two lines isn't really good, as in a full summary. Not like a synopsis, yeah. a full summary. Just watch the changeling. It's the better version of the motion picture. Is it? <laughs> There's a reason they call the motion picture where Nomad has gone before. No, I know, but I mean, truly, just the fact the ship's nicer. Wins. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, for for visuals, for sure. Like, yeah. This is a visual movie, for sure. But I'm just saying, for a more, for better dialogue and just better oh, yeah. story, watch the changeling. <laughs> Um, Eric Skelton, two dollars. Is Commodore Decker Matt Decker's Matt Decker's son? Yes, yes he is. Will Decker is Matt Decker's son. It'd be nice to think that's true. Yeah, yeah. it's what everything in Beta Can and everything has said, so uh -huh. it's fine. I like it. Let's see if that turn is in the original Breakfast Cut. As I can compare. Mm -hmm. I'll say there's one thing that I 
regret them not doing. I wonder if you'd agree with me in this. I'll just find the shot first and I'll let you know if, if you agree with me. Okay, the spin is in the original director's cup. Okay, cool. In the in the original film, it just moves out and moves out. There's no extra levels there. Okay, tell me if you think this is insane. But this actually involves changing the film. That might be sacrosanct. Okay. Okay. Ah, James. Go. Okay. Well, more, more. Okay. What about? And just before you start, Dan. Oh. Changeling is a TOS episode with Nomad. That's what it is. That's the name of the episode. All right, go. Yeah. How would you feel if, in, and as well as this, what I was thinking when they were going through, if in the scene where they take Ilya into the big wreck deck, if they actually digitally altered the paintings on the wall to move all of them to the left, remove the sailing ship, and put the NX01 between the carrier and the Enterprise, Connie. I would be thoroughly annoyed with that because okay. I, I like that the NX-01 is an alternate timeline. That's why it's not on the Enterprise D. You'd have to you'd have to put it in the Enterprise D lineup in the briefing room as well. You have to add but it that's in there. A, but I mean, they're, they're two different beasts. You know, if since that's all fixed, you could do it and you could fix that canon mistake. So you say, don't do it, don't, don't fix it. it, leave us as. Nope. Yep. Okay. Because that I was kind of expecting. Never existed that. in this timeline. So I think that'd be really kind of clever if they did that. It would be it would be tricky to make it look seamless because you've got to move all the pictures. But like, yeah. who the hell cares if the sailing ship's gone? Come on. Like, just move in one and put the. It's one that started the lineage, so it's very. The NX one's far more important. Do you see how what it did? It races it. Yeah, it never existed in this timeline, so. <sighs> the sailing ship is the namesake of the of Enterprise. So I'll remove the anything else. One of the other ones. But I was kind of surprised because I never noticed before. I thought it was just a, a, a new shot. But this shot of the Enterprise Connie is just a classic promo picture of the Enterprise around a planet. It's a really bad quality picture. They just made black yeah. and white. It's sort of like just, oh, is that still I know from every production image uh, thing. I was confused. What, what do you guys think? Would you want to add the NX one in post? Change it? I think it? that's a poll question. Because we have 139 votes on okay. this poll. So let's... What's the final results, Stuart? Make... Tell us. What do you think of the motion picture director's edition? 60% loved it. 25% liked it. 12% said it's okay. And 3% said don't like it that much. Well, there you go. There you go. Right, let's add a new one then. All right. And while he's doing that, guys, still five likes away from 100 likes coming up on that hour mark. So if you're here and you haven't hit like yet, hit that like, like button. Um, and... As I've been saying, super chat your th thoughts. Anything you liked about this film originally when you saw it in theaters, just let us know. We're talking about the motion picture in general, not just this, specifically the new 4K remastered edition. So let us know any thoughts, anything that changed that you didn't like, didn't appreciate, uh, wish they wouldn't have fixed, wish they would have fixed. Let us know. Uh, super chatting your thoughts and we will discuss that. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it on the big screen if I'm able to. As soon as this live is done, I'm going to look into that and see what's going on. Matt Borman said 3% of people don't like joy. <clears throat> no, I think 3% of people are just trolls that are trying to be contrarian. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, we hit 100 likes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Great job. No new members, though, joining the channel. Hit that join button and look at your options. Might be something you'd be interested in if you can't super chat a lot. It's kind of like a once a month type deal to support the channel. And it's not very expensive. So look into it. Wouldn't mind adding a few new crew members to the ranks. Matt says, when I was a teenager, I didn't really appreciate TMP. I didn't either. I appreciated moments in TMP, but I wish it would have been cut down. Now I kind of get the it's the grand sweeping thing. But it's one of those ones that I can put on and do other things while I'm watching it because there's a lot of dead time. Um, I find if I actually watch it, a lot of times I'll get sleepy. Um, it, is a, it is a weirdly paced film. I don't know if the remastered edition did anything to help with pacing, but <clears throat> yeah, it was basically showing off the cinematics and the special effects. And 
William Shatner actually, after having seen it in theaters when it first came out, thought he 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 thought Star Trek was dead as a result because it was just such a slow slow film. And Leonard Nimoy didn't like the uh, didn't like it either. It was just kind of a interesting way to go from Star Trek to maybe doing Phase Two TV. Oh, well, let's do a movie and kind of have it not really hit with the main actors and then to get revived with star trek 2 i mean it's it's a weird anomaly in everything but it's a product of its time it's 1979 so a lot of that shows in the wardrobe and the colors and like samuel said with the double focus thing there's some weird tricks and stuff that really date it and i appreciate it for what it is um an attempt at something new and to bring a tv show from a failed tv show by the way um, which got canceled after three seasons uh to the big screen and then have that you know create such a amazing franchise it's pretty impressive so i'm glad they did it but uh yeah phase two would have been cool too maybe or it might have failed i don't know well, I don't think anyone is. Not many people say it's a great movie, but it's an experience. You know, experience, yeah. Because there's, you know, it has to have a good story as well. And there's, when you realise almost nothing happens in the film, you're like, because they do. They just they get a signal. People die. They fly mm-hmm. to the ship. They get taken to the ship. They talk to the ship. They go to the ship. They find the ship. They say goodbye to the ship. They come back to Earth, and it ends kind of abruptly. I mean, they they do fire a torpedo once. I personally, though, Stuart, don't know if you'd agree with me. If I was doing a double director's cut, I'd just remove the entire wormhole sequence. That's one of the best sequences. It's though. so out of place. It makes no sense. Well, doesn't create a wormhole. As well, don't get stuck into it. None of that makes sense. It's weird and slow. And yes, it makes Decker look good, but it's so, like, no, none of it works at all. It's, it's so. It's so. Well, the limited. externals, the exterior shots were such visually so visually cool. I love that. And it's also one of the best things of the Star Trek The Motion Picture pop-up book. You open it up, it had the Enterprise from behind, you saw the asteroid, you put a little flap at the bottom and the asteroid just exploded. It was awesome. If you have the pop-up book, you know what I'm talking about. That was a great scene. It doesn't make sense. (laughs) You can't make a wormhole like that. You just can't. Was this photon torpedo blue? Yes. Okay. It's because of the distortion from the wormhole. I mean, they were blue in TOS, so it does make sense if you're going that route. Yeah. That's what I thought they were doing. But yeah, terrible scene for me. That does so abstract. But there's lots of random you... scenes. There's just things that are just added for the sake of it. Like, they are padding a lack of story with stuff. And that's obviously quite an expensive scene. It's like, spend the money somewhere else. You know? T. Louise Allen has upgraded, well, has joined the channel at the rank of captain. So, welcome, captain. Thank you so much. Regular name, so good to see you here! <clears throat> good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. But yeah, we're st- we are still, guys, 140 from our minimum. Which ain't great, and we thought TMP would be quite a big topic, so throw some fives in. See what you think? Let us know. But what we're doing, yes. uh, as other lives do, because we can now announce our live schedule. Tomorrow, we're doing a Drunk Yards afternoon edition mm-hmm. and middle of the week edition because mm-hmm. tomorrow is the day before we get new lower decks so we're gonna have like a welcome back lower decks party mm-hmm. we're gonna have margaritas and grass skirts and we're gonna do dances and, you know have a welcome back we're party all gonna be lower from decks. hawaii yeah i think it'll probably start earlier as well not around four i don't know if you're agreeable to that do you mean as in but... four being this time well, there are regular. Teams. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It'll be earlier. Oh, it's obviously sleepy. <laughs> but around two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Especially if you then got to then wake up and do. Well, I've got then got to wake up and do low decks. You've got to make sure you go to sleep and wake up and do low decks. Yeah. Because uh, I'm expecting, even though there are only twenty episodes, there'll be more dense of stuff than Discovery or Picard or Stranger Worlds. <laughs> yeah. Kind of stuff. It won't, it won't just be lower decks focused. Like we can talk about whatever, but yeah, yeah. it'll be like a welcome back lower decks type deal. And then on Thursday night, I will be doing my first reaction to the first episode of Season 3 at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Friday, we're back to our regular Friday reviews where we just review it at the regular time of 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 
join us for that. So we got a few good lives lined up this week. And then, probably, possibly, maybe, Saturday, another Drunkyards Live. Mm -hmm. um, to which we may have a special guest star. A, a never been on the channel, but we'll see if she wants to be on the channel. <laughs> uh, yet, yet to be named in rank. We have an ambassador, an admiral, a captain, and a commander. Don't know what her rank will be, because uh, that'll be her official from then on, so we'll see. And that'll be a welcome back, Lower Decks, again. Now we've seen she it. A, she could be a yeoman, because she doesn't. No, no, she'll want to outrank at least me and you, at least. Well, that's not going to happen. Well. She needs to know it's just as much or more than us to do that. Yeah, but she's prettier than us, and that, by definition, gets you a high rank. I mean, that's how our society works, you know. Not really. Yeah. Crazy Ghost Hunters, $2. Thank you. NX, NX01 was the first Starfleet 1701 First Federation. Yes, first Starfleet, but not First Federation. The First Federation was serious. <laughs> yes. Uh... Because that's always the, yeah, but it's not it's not joke, a canon it? mistake because they, they hadn't even thought of Enterprise yet. But I prefer they wouldn't touch that honestly. It would be cool. nice little nod. It'd be a nice little nod. It would be cool, but it, it's just it's just like the you know the blood splat. <clears throat> it's just one of those mistakes that are there. So well, you could you could fix it and you know be kind of cool. Uh, it's like um, I would I would like them if they ever did a remaster of Voyager to fix Sulu's Enterprise to look like Star Trek Six Enterprise, not uh, Excelsior, not glowing nacelles. That's a TNG trope. Like, don't have the wrong Excelsior. You knew what it looked like. You did it wrong. Why are you making a mistake? You know what I mean? I know you also had the cling actor to come over, but I, I would like fix that. It's just a mistake. Like, don't don't keep it. You know? Yeah. Hmm. So, one new member, 107 likes. Mm -hmm. Still quite far away from our minimum. Mm -hmm. So, guys, super chat in. Let us know any memories and, and, or thoughts you have about the motion picture. And the reason we have a minimum is because we can't live off less than our minimum. So, if we don't hit our minimums many times, then we have to dip into savings or ask us different others to pay for more things out of their work salaries. Yeah. Which is kind of unfair to them to do that many a time. Because, you know, all, all the finances are balanced. So, if we suddenly can't earn money, then it's like, well, maybe we can't pay rent that month. Or have to get a loan or something, you know? I mean, it was oh, there for a reason. Yeah, new track around the corner, so I'm not super worried about it, but... Oh, no, just, you know... Fives. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, I will say that I definitely yawned a lot through the movie. Because I was already tired, but it's not very... It's not... There's moments of truly unengaging content. And certainly if you're already tired, it's not one to keep you engaged. But then when you get engaged, it's like there's moments of just like, ooh, true like, ooh. You know? It's just like, that. that's that's cool. Mm. Oh, James that. Butler says, what year is TMP? It is 1979. Two years after Star Wars. There's not much time between the last episode of Enterprise and the construction of the first Connie, like 40 years or something. I think it's more like 80 years between... An XO one and yeah, there's loads of time. Yeah, that's that's the it's biggest single jump in uh, in Trek history. Well, it's it's equivalent to the Lost Era, somewhat. So about eighty years, and the Lost Era is about eighty three years or eighty eight years. I can't remember. I will look, <clears throat> but but yeah, it's way yeah, more than. I mean, Archer lives to the start tart of the Enterprise being launched, but he's like one hundred and thirty. So that's not necessarily yeah. a, a statement of wow, he lived. Ooh, Matt says it was the same year he was born. So Matt's a 1979 baby. I was already five at that point. Yeah. Uh, the Aaliyah probe in the mini robe was pretty hot, I must say, says Todd Walker. <laughs> yeah, the, the two launch dates were 92 years apart. Nice. There you go. Almost a century. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, it's definitely... 
The, the, the film, uh, this is obviously something that you planned, but the film is kind of asking for a final moment when the Klingons do recompile around Earth. Like, yes. there's, that was originally one of oh. the plans. Like, that would yes. function make sense. Like, you have this epic moment of peace, and Vija thinks, I will, you know, give give back to the universe those that I took, and suddenly the space station's in orbit, and the D7, or the continuum's in orbit, and then they're like, oh shit, and then you've got to fight them, even, or just in a mini scene. Like, some yeah. some epic sort of final moment, because it, it very abrupt the ending. I was kind of shocked how much, like, we solved it! Where, where to now? I guess that way. What about our lost commander? Eh, what about... Any missions we have, like you know you're not met, Kirk. You've only got command for this one mission. The mission's over. You go back to Earth. You stay at Earth. You don't go off to warp somewhere. What are you doing? You're breaking all the laws. It's very abrupt that way. Well, yeah. Originally that was storyboarded. The three Klingons rematerialize. They yeah. attack the Enterprise. The engineering section gets damaged, so they have to do a saucer separation. That was going to be the end of the film, but they thought it would mess with pacing and also add a shit ton of money for effects. Which, so, which it would. The story. The storyboard sequences are nice, though. So if you haven't looked into those guys, look into that. The original ending for the motion picture that was storyboarded but never done. And it shows the saucer separation capabilities of a Constitution-class ship. So, Like, I definitely would have, yeah. wouldn't have had it just basically destroy the Enterprise, but certainly have a, a brief fight in Kirk, you know, talk him down or Spock talk him down or something. Or maybe Spock uses newfound emotional maturity to talk him down or something, you know? That sounds like an ad break. It does, yeah. Wow, that was an incredible ad break. I was entertained for I feel, all the seconds of it, Stuart. Wow. I feel rejuvenated and refreshed and all that. Yeah. And, Thanks uh, to our sponsor. Go watch Maybe. that movie or buy that car or whatever they're advertising. Or Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we don't have any control whatsoever. You'd think we'd get some... Wouldn't they be nice if they just let us veto stuff? Pick what the hell it's on our channel, but... Yeah. Uh, James Butler says, I came here for a two hour discussion about Bones' epic beard. I am disappointed. I am disappointed. It was a pretty epic beard. Was it his and, real beard or, you, or is it a fake beard? It was beard? his real beard, yes. And the gold medallion with the chest hair, I mean, just instantly dated the movie. Boom. We just walked off the street from the 1970s onto the soundstage. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, did them no favors. Yeah. Um, I feel as though the solution to the end battle of Earth would be more Starfleet ships coming back in the Klingons' retreat. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. More ship. Well, the problem is, V'ger's done so much and compiled so much information. Alien ships from different quadrants just hanging around earth now hey how's it going so many first contacts right now awesome yeah it's definitely okay reconnected we're okay then now we're back there we go okay then don't know what happened there guys sorry v'ger v'ger doesn't want us to talk about it True. yeah like i said it felt very very powerful this movie but it also takes some of, some of the, the stakes out because they win. Vija will win. Whatever you do, Vija will win. And I appreciate the whole, you know, if we could blow up the ship and take it out with us. But at the same time, you're listening to that, you're like, could you, though? Given everything we've seen, given that Vija could, was able to show Spock the entire living memory of it and then not be there in the next scene because then they just travelled to it without... I think, I think Vija could stop your explosion, no offence. Yeah. yeah. And Christian Montgomery says the civilian attire at Starfleet headquarters terminal also. Yes. But even in uh, the cage, the original cage, you see people walking down the corridors of the Enterprise in 1960s clothing. So, yeah, they did very poor with civilian clothing. That's why for, for Star Trek 3, their civilian clothing was still futuristic and strange looking. And they didn't make them wear 80s clothes. Because, <laughs> again, it would have dated it. So. Well, like I say, loincloths. I mean, yeah. literally, there's like a Tarzan lady. It's like, but why? What is the reason for this? They said they didn't have one. Casual, casual trekker, five dollars. Thought I didn't pay my Wi-Fi this month, and they shut me off. LOL. 
No, you're good. You're good. It was just a streaming issue with OBS, so don't worry. We got it sorted. We're only in control somewhat of these things. We're only in control 98.7% of the time. Mm. Only two AUs worth of control. Ah, that's a good reference. I like that. Because they totally did fix the voiceover. They say two AUs rather than 12 AUs. And it seems nice. you, you can't tell. It all blends in well together. So that was good. Good. That's another good uh, fix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Hmm. Hmm. 112 likes. Can we hit 120? Are there new people here that have a like button? I think there are. Are there eight of them? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hit that like button, please. Keep the super chats coming. We are you know, quite a ways from our minimum. I mean, tomorrow's drunk errors will probably make up for that because we'll be drinking. I'm going to come in a little bit sloshed, by the way. I'm going to have a few drinks beforehand. So a couple of shots right off the top of the live stream should be fun. Ah! So, yeah, join us tomorrow for that and save your, well, save your money for that because shots. Duh. That's true. Just saying. Just saying. That is true. <clears throat> Paul B says, I love it, but sometimes I wish the motion picture would have been phase two of the series. But then TNG would not exist. Question mark. Yeah, TNG might not have existed. Uh, the refit enterprise as we see it wouldn't have existed. Uh, we would have had the phase two enterprise. There would have been a lot of little changes. And uh, it's an alternate reality that I'd like to visit. I want to see how phase two went and what Star Trek is 56 years later. Yeah. Yeah, I think mm. it, it's super important this film exists rather than a show, because a show, I mean, it's not test, oh, it's test footage, but test footage looked cheesy as hell. It wasn't finished, but if that was the quality yeah. anywhere near, even a tenth of quality, it was not going to be good. It would have been very dated into the era, because it wouldn't have had budget to go too far beyond that. Exteriors would have been fine, but miniatures, they couldn't have done too much, so wouldn't have had any of the epicness. And they wouldn't have got a movie after that, sort of. But they, you know, they would have got okay ratings. We got three seasons again, got cancelled again. Well, we try it twice. We're not going to a third time. But a movie, yeah. you're getting in millions in a go, and you can always lower the budget and make more money, whatever. And you have a certain, in fact, they film on better cameras means the footage holds up. Like some of the stuff looks great now. You know, seeing Walter Young, on big screen looks great. TV would not have looked good. Like just that stuff would not have looked great. And in those levels, and because mm -hmm. they had such a fundamental wow, we've got a movie level that allowed a brand confidence to you know, well, we got three movies, so a spin off. Well, if you have a second spin off, it doesn't do well, you don't mm -hmm. get a third version. So, yeah, I mean, this film is responsible yeah. for its <clears throat> semi failure, but also flukingly impressive visual effects and enterprise. Just to compare it to compared to Knight Rider, if Knight Rider had made a movie instead of a made for TV movie like Knight Rider 2000 mm. or the new Knight Rider series, because there was like two new Knight Rider series, they both flopped and failed. If Knight Rider... Like... A lot, a lot can happen, and yes. The, the movies, I think, really helped them out, so... Chris Bounds says Star Trek continues, fixes it. No, it doesn't. Star Trek continues, just finishes the five-year mission. Uh, Star Trek New Voyages includes the um, Phase 2 Connie, which... Again, it's continuing the five-year mission, but... It's also so briefly used that it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. going to do, obviously, lots it's of... It's an intermediary... Yeah, it's like an intermediary step between the Connie and the refit. It's like the progression to the refit. Um, like a year or two that they had it kind of thing. I don't know how I feel about that, but you can see the technology progressing, so... But they promised so much and did so little with it, so... I mean, that whole big trailer with whatever his name is, the alien creature on the bridge, and it's like, nope, that's all we got. That test footage. It's like, oh, oh. oh, Lieutenant Eric, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Todd Walker says the test footage was horrible and no Spock. Yes, there would have been no Leonard Nimoy or Spock mm -hmm. coming back. He would have had Zahn. Um, which, the guys in the movie, the guys in the motion picture, he plays a human on um, mm -hmm. the Epsilon station. Uh, but yeah, you wouldn't it would have been totally different to have a phase two. So he's also not very good in the film. I didn't think that ever before, but seeing is he's like, look, Epsilon Station is destroyed. 
It's like, wow, that was the that was the line read. You are Sarah, not a good actor at this. As a Vulcan, lack of emotion works. As a person, please have some character. It's like one of the first few lines of dialogue is a lady at the uh, at the place as well, and her line is also terrible. It's like, what? Set take two. Jesus. Yeah. So unbelievable. Lucky Shatner really like Shatner is, is a, such a core of this. Uh, although I, I still don't quite get Decker's leap of faith of, you know what, me staring at Leah for the last two minutes clearly implies we're both thinking let's have sparkly sex that's standing up. It's, we're both thinking it. It's like what? There is such a leap there. You know, maybe Ilya Probe is sending him subconscious signals to, to convert him to train to change his brain matter fine, but there isn't a scene where he, she is in love with it. It, it. It's so bare bones, you know? Does anyone else know that the um, Ilya Decker relationship just got copied and stamped onto TNG with Riker and Troy? The whole Imzadi thing, haven't seen you in a long time. It was the same feel when they first met each other, the same kind of music, the same kind of looks, you know, so. Although uh, better done, but we also have seven years, three movies, and Picard to, to pull from, so. Exactly. And yes. again, the yeah. line of my for celibacy, it's the single cringiest thing in that film. Take that line <laughs> out, holy fuck. Don't, it just feels so 70s sexist, whatever. No, Take... no fuck, because celibacy. Sure. But what an awful line. That's just, that's just so... I think it's kind of pathetic. Like, it doesn't add anything. If you're going to go into it, go into it later. You know, go into it. But it's such a stupid non-line. And just remove it. Blair. Yeah. Uh, so we have 70 votes on the poll. Go vote on the poll, guys. Mm. Your thoughts on that? I want to get over 100 votes generally for the polls. Mm -hmm. uh, 120 likes is fantastic, mm -hmm. so it's great. But super chats are low, so if you mm -hmm. guys can throw in some fives or some tens, would be amazing right now. Mm -hmm. um, let us know your thoughts on the motion picture. Yes, good, good bad. Yeah, twenty-four dollars will get us to half our minimum, which is not good, but it's at least half. Twenty-four, two four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two four. Yeah, tune in tomorrow early, probably around two ish, two Eastern Standard Time. So we'll start and we'll. Do a celebration and a welcome to season three of Lord X. And just have some fun, talk about it, some everything. Who knows what we'll talk about? That's kind of up to you guys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. bring your topics and watch a drunk guys try to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Although briefly, uh, speaking of uh, the, the movies, in the they keep sort of releasing sort of teasers for sort of Lord X, sort of like twenty second things. And in one, it did reveal a uh, some Wrath of Khan costumes were coming back for a scene. Oh, nice! No context given. Real Wrath of Khan costumes or like the, the Strange New Worlds versions, the lazy, weird cut. It was the back of their bodies, so let's not let's not jump to conclusions. But uh, I th I think Mike would do the proper ones. Let's, I, I think Mike knows. Yeah, I know he would. Chris Bounds throws in ten dollars with no. That's comment. two fives, Stuart. That's double as good. Appreciated. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of fives, Casual Trekker throws in a five, and says, "Is alive about Lower Decks also going to act as the live for the Strange New Worlds Lower Decks crossover discussion?" Cool. And uh, we got we got the lead up to season two of, Lo of Strange New Worlds to talk about that crossover. You guys. If 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 you're here, casual trekker, you can bring it up in a super chat. Yes. We'll discuss it for sure. Our thoughts on it, um, and it's it's not going to replace it necessarily. Yeah. And and speaking of the Star Trek Day, they're promising announcements. So when we had a brief break, mm -hmm. Comic Con was somewhat lax, but a little bit came out, and then um, Double Dex will have a, a two weeks and we'll have Star Trek Day. So I'm, I'm sure they'll release some sort of Picard teaser, maybe Stranger Worlds Season 2 trailer, because I've got a lot of that's going to be finished at this point. Mm -hmm. I guess that'll be their announcing the next thing to come after Lodex. Cause then, I yeah. want to hear Prodigy. I want to hear the update on Prodigy when it's coming back. I, I It's got to be the one after it, surely. 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 Yeah. 
Robert Hartley throws in ten dollars again with no comment, but thank you so much, Robert. Much appreciated. And I got over that first line. What a pal. And our newest captain, T. Louise Allen, throws throws in two dollars and says, Excited for Lower Decks. As are we. Yes. We love Lower Decks. It was when we did our best new Star Trek uh, shows, it was ranked number one by both of us, so yeah. This... Very very happily number one. There's a there's a slight margin between that and Stranger Worlds. Despite how good Stranger Worlds is. Because, you know, using the cannon will always get you more points versus changing the cannon. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what weird shit they get into. But also how, so was, how restrained they are. Hmm. So it was our Riker. It was our number one. Get it? Get it? No? No? I mean, Stranger Worlds is the captain. Still good, but not our number one. Get it? Get it? I'll shut up then. Go vote on the poll. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Dear me. 20th century, 21st century father. Legacy, unfortunately, isn't as good as when it originally came out because I've been told people loved it in the theater and it made money. I've heard mixed reviews. Um, even some of the actors like Shatner and me. I hated the dialogue in it. Didn't think it spoke to their characters at all. Shatner was disappointed by the pace. Thought that Star Trek was dead, officially dead at that point. Kind of embarrassed by it. Um, so yeah, it's hard to say really what people thought. But well, also they. I think it's like I think it's like the. Um... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. I was gonna say I think it's like the uh, Star Wars prequels, The Phantom Menace. A lot of people went into that came out of it going that was the greatest experience of my life ah oh, mm. it was amazing oh star wars is back and then they watched it a few more times and they're kind of like uh yeah so i don't know if you if you, if you watch the build-up to that and then the interviews of people coming out of the theater everybody's so stoked and yeah that kind of faded quickly so so saying, it's probably more something along those lines or the opposite people were disappointed by tmp but then they had time to think about it after the fact and liked it in contrast in retrospect because you got to think even about though yeah even the phantom menace is like more now because of the because of the new sequel ones. films yes <laughs> not for itself just compared to them well a lot, i'm sure a lot of star trek fans are comparing or looking at the new star trek new track as they call it and going, wow the motion picture is fantastically great as a result that is true. same it's the same thing that is true it does look better compared so. to 09 Enterprise looks better but now Discovery. compared to a lot of the new track as well. Discovery yep. and Picard and stuff. So. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. So that you tried to make a Star Trek show. That does help. Yeah. It's not, it's not a secret to success. It's just makers. But I was, I was, was going to jump in on was that I think part of also why Shatner and Nimoy and the such, they <coughs> disappointed, is also because they were trying to make the next Star Wars. They'd also seen Star Wars. And it ain't no Star Wars, because Star Wars has all of the aspects. The characters, the visuals, and the story. This movie has some of the characters, all the visuals, and almost none of the story. Yeah. Like, Kirk and Spock are great. Bones is good. No one else exists really there. Deck is okay. The visuals are great. There is almost no story. So, you know, you feel the difference, because they're comparing to what they were trying to make. And they probably didn't know what it was going to look like until the edit... Um, you know, they're probably also concerned about work. I know Shatner had a difficult time after TOS mm -hmm. for a bit, and then a new series, Phase Two, is coming out. I'll be working for a few more years at least, and it's like, no, I'm going to get a movie, you know, budget paycheck, and maybe more. And it's like, if it didn't do well, and he didn't think it was worth it when he saw it on the big screen, it's like, oh shit, I'm not going to be working as, I'm not going to be able to use Star Trek as a cash cow. <laughs> Well, they still do conventions, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting because a, a TV show, say you might get a million for a year, a movie might get 1.7 million for five months. But obviously that's it, and then you move on, there's no work the next time. That's why yeah. a lot of um, a lot of clever act like big actors go on to a film for a month and a half. They only have so many scenes, and they get paid, you know... 1.2 million, they do five films in a year that are all relatively small. Okay, they're not obviously playing a huge part in them, 
you know, whereas an actor, the lead is, you know, six, seven months. Or, like a Lord of the Rings, you're doing it for two and a half years because they're filming all three back to back. And it's like, I lived there for th- almost three years. Mm-hmm. It's a long time. And then it takes like six years to release them, four years to release them. Yeah. And yes, Ozzy. Kirk did get another job as TJ Hooker. I mean, Shatner's sure. had lots of work and lots of things. And I've yet to see TJ Hooker, but I'm excited to see it eventually. I remember watching it when I was a kid. I haven't revisited it at all, but it was on in the house occasionally. Although I think two had only a fraction of the budget. Yes, that's the problem. The best Star Trek films are the ones that had the lowest budgets. Mm-hmm. The best Star Trek films also didn't have toys. Same thing. Mm-hmm. They made toys for the motion picture. They didn't sell. So for Star Trek Two, they were, said we're not making toys. Star Trek Two did really well. So because it did really well for Star Trek Three, they're like we're going to make toys. So they made t- toys for Star Trek Three. There's only like four of them: the Ergal toys, the, the figures. Again, Star Trek Three wasn't as good as Star Trek Two is by what this was. What a lot of, a lot of people thought. So the toys didn't sell. So Star Trek Four, no toys. Star Trek Four did very well. Star Trek Five, they made some figures and a few other things as well because Star Trek 4 did so well. Star Trek 5 tanked. So Star Trek 6, no toys. It's a weird based on based on the gross um, income. So It's funny to, to think about though. Best movies don't have the toys. I don't know, man. If only they'd known. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yes, the Taco Bell glasses. Yes. Well, that's not really toys now, is it? That's promotional tie-ins. Um. All right. Well, we're almost at a hundred votes on that poll. But the poll is: Should they have changed the ships called Enterprise paintings in the Red Room to include the NX01 full chain? And right now. It's so close. It's 51% say no, leave it as a canon mistake. Mm. And 49% said yes, change it and add the NX01. But we have 84 votes. Can we get to 100 votes and see if we can equal this out to 50 50? Because it's a purely Ooh. conceptual thing. Uh, you know, yeah. I was going to possibly do a third option saying, you know, or don't change it as a historical document, but they change it massively by removing things, fixing things. Like every time they fix an effect, that's they change the legacy of it you know you watch the rents cut to watch a fixed version if you watch the film as it was you watch the original you don't this is already a changed version end of so why not change more things you know what i mean like small little fixes already changed it's like um you know much harder to do but if there was a way a budget to make a director's cut of of i think sort of three or i guess three and they were able to somehow move the the khan damage the right side and fix that mistake. Would you want that? Yeah. Because it's a no. canon mistake, and it does not make sense, and it's wrong, but it's there. Yeah. It's like, well, you know? Well, that extra damage is explained in a novel, first of all, which is kind of funny, because it's like a way to fix the mistake, mm-hmm. which is actually very well done. Um, stupid. And also, it's a stupid idea, yeah. but it's very well done as well. Yeah. Also, some of the damage can be explained by subsistence exploding throughout the ship and whatever and then the deflection the deflector shields are down on that side so i got tumbled by some stuff on the on the trip you know uh-huh. stuff like that you can come up with really great excuses uh-huh. sure hey hey you be quiet you, you sound like salty tracker you don't have an imagination to come up with th- reasons to explain things i am nothing like him i am very creative <laughs> i know you are <laughs> uh, uh, but guys can we get a final nine dollars and we'll close out. That'd be awesome, yeah. That would be awesome, yeah. But we have one member. That is amazing. Thank you to you. Pull at 52%. That's interesting. And yeah, right up there, Clodex. I am. I certainly feel calm before a storm. Yes, indeed. I hope so. Because I can imagine that each season they obviously have more assets ready to go. As we spoke to Mike, and he was making season three, so we get a context. He apologized to his team live on our show. That he can't even make new things where normally animated you 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 life you live and breathe and reusing things to save money and he's like no keep building new things so you know they have the obina they have all these cool ships they're gonna do more ships 
and I'm freaking so. thrilled. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. Well. Mm -hmm. ISFJ ten oh nine ten dollars. Thank you so much. Uh, just because y'all are going to get drunk tomorrow, I got to go pick up some. Yes. Stuff for shot. I do as well. Yeah, I also have to then get drunk, get sober, sleep, wake up, do all the prep, so that when you wake up, you can film, so I can do all the editing, so I can get stuff out, so I can then, because I'm not here Sunday, but get drunk with you again on Saturday, so I can edit Saturday, and I get... Many things. It's hard being a YouTuber. Can be. But this is the only 10 I'm really excited for. Like, truly. So it's like, yes. I'll, I'll take the hard work for this show. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Well, I guess we'll call it quits there. Thank you so much. We'll close this poll out right now. Mm. Uh, it's 52% for no, leave it as a canon mistake. 48% said yes, add the NX on one end. So. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Very close. Cool, yo. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. We'll catch you guys tomorrow earlier time. So stay tuned to the notifications and stuff to notice when we're starting. And go, go watch it in the cinema if you can. Is an experience is definitely better than on your TV. There you go. Heard from the commander's mouth. Yes. All right. Until tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be around two ish. T Louise. Two ish Eastern Standard Time. So until then, he's Commander Cocking. He's got a fighting. See you guys later. Bye guys.